Uh, well, Pat, it's a big day, but if I was you and if I was your colleagues, I'd be sitting there thinking, this looks like our homework, that somebody's stolen parts of this and, um, and, and presented it yeah. as theirs, and they might be getting a, a gold star for it. Is there a bit of that with you? Do you feel that you've put influence uh, onto the government for some of their policies? Yeah, I think it's a very fair point. Uh, I do think we've set the agenda for some of this. Uh, we called, for example, for an extension of the uh, cap on the energy prices for another few months. Uh, we called for uh, the freeze in fuel duty to be carried over for another year. And we've been talking about childcare for quite a long time. So, uh, you know, I'm quite pleased that uh, Labour's setting the agenda. If the government wants to follow our lead, uh, I don't mind that. Uh, it does mean the next time you hear a government spokesperson saying Labour's not fit to run the country, uh, that maybe we should question that because uh, if they're adopting so many of our policies, uh, then it suggests that uh, we're not as reckless uh, as they sometimes suggest. So uh, I think if they do that, it's a good thing. But the real question will be uh, the longer term, I think, after today and whether the budget does enough for economic growth. And on that front, I don't think it will pass the homework test. And what in particular do you think is failing with that homework test then? Because, I mean, he's addressing that square on, isn't he, in terms of trying to relax the rules on, on migrant workers. He's also trying to address the issue of the long-term sick. He's trying to get mums back into work. He's trying to get wealthy pensioners to stay in work. What would Labour do in addition to that? Well, growth is the right question uh, because we're the only G7 country not to recover our pre-COVID position and the forecasts are uh, for pretty weak growth over the next year or two, uh, two. so there are several bigger long-term things that need to be done. Uh, if you look first and foremost at the green transition, this is what's powering growth in the United States right now uh, with President Biden's Inflation uh, Reduction Act. We're just not on the pitch uh, in the UK compared to what they're doing in the United States right now and indeed there'll be a European uh, EU response as well. And we've got to get on the pitch on this. We've got to make um, uh, planning and delivery of projects much easier. There's more that needs to be done on workforce with the reform of the apprenticeship levy and some other changes there. Uh, and I also think that we need more certainty and stability in policy. We've got to fix some of the holes in Boris Johnson's Brexit deal. We've got to bring all these together in a big, ambitious, long-term growth plan. And I think apart from the individual measures, that's the thing that seems to be missing from what's been leaked and pre-briefed about this budget so far. Drop to today as well. Uh, lots of strikes. The biggest strike day of the year. Everything from teachers to, to BBC staff. I mean, would you be so supportive of the Labour Party of these strikes if and when you're in power? Well, I don't think we are necessarily supportive of strikes. I think that's a... Uh, I wouldn't characterise that as a position. Nobody wants to see strikes. And in fact, when we were in power, we didn't have these kind of strikes. Uh, you know, we didn't have them in, uh, uh, in the years when Labour was in government. I wouldn't say we had zero strikes, but we certainly never had anything like the widespread industrial action that we've uh, experienced in now. And the reason for that goes back to growth. When you have the right economic growth, you can generate the wealth to fund your public services properly and pay the staff properly. And because of 13 years of low growth, what we've got is the position where the tax burden is at its highest for 60 or 70 years. But it's not resulting in top class public services where the workers are properly paid. And that's where this pressure is coming from. So in the short term, the government does need to get around the table with the unions and bring this period of industrial strife to an end. But in the longer term, that will only be a short term fix unless we can improve our economic growth position. Because if we can't do that, incomes will continue to stagnate and you still have these kind of problems. Pat McFadden, a final question to you on Gary Lineker. Uh, Lucy Powell in the Commons yesterday appeared to compare his suspension to a campaign and the campaign to undermine the BBC uh, to, to Putin's Russia, which has caused huge offence and it caused upset in the Commons. Will the Labour Party apologise for that? 
Look, uh, I think enough's been said about Gary Lineker and the BBC in recent days. I'm going to focus on the budget Comparison, and economic growth. That's my job, crimes, and that's what I. Uh, uh, look, I'm, I'm glad he's going to be back on the air uh, presenting match of the day. I'm a big football fan. I think he's a good presenter, uh, and I hope we can get over the period of the last uh, few days of the BBC. Okay.